Hello, hello, it's June Olson with Junebug Creations, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator coming to you live from Whitefish, Montana. F totally forgot to flip up my camera. Thought everything was set, but apparently not. It's been a day. <laughs> so, first we did the uh, unboxing earlier and it turned out to just be boxes of catalogs. So, explains why it was so heavy. Soon as I get my new pre-order stuff from the new annual catalog though, I will be unboxing it and I will be showing it all to you. So tonight is the mystery make-along makeup because Monday night we were supposed to go live. It would have been my first time going live both on Facebook and on YouTube, but unfortunately the internet gods were not working in my favor. They were not ready for all of this. So we're doing it tonight. So if you got your email and you had plenty of time to get your ingredients ready for tonight, you can either sign up for the email list to get your ingredients. So just email me at junebugcreations29 at gmail.com and I will put you on the list. Make sure in the subject line you put MMA for mystery make along list and I will add you to that email list so that you can get the ingredients sent to you the picture of the ingredients and the little list of little explanations and have it sent to you on Saturday night typically is when I'm trying to get it out Sunday morning at the very latest and then Monday evening we get together now I'm trying to get it to where maybe I get it done by Friday so you have the whole weekend I'm working on it and it's a work in progress but that way you have time and you can go ahead and get your ingredients ready and then you can make the card along with me like tonight. So take a peek if you haven't done it. If you're new, make sure if you are on YouTube, you subscribe down below on that red subscribe button and hit the bell so that you get notified when I'm on. Hi Missy, nice to have you on here. And if you're on Facebook, if you're watching this, comment please. If you're not watching this live and you're watching it on a replay, go ahead and let me know that you're watching it on a replay. And then make sure you can either message me or email me your email address if you want those ingredients, if you wanna be sure to get them. Because we all know how on Facebook you may or may not, unless you make sure to go to Joomba Creations 29 on Facebook and find that ingredients list. All right, so let's go ahead and switch. Here are our ingredients that I had laid out, starting with Thick white cardstock. Ooh, that got a little dusty or something. Thick white cardstock cut. It's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and fold that and use our bone folder to burnish it. That way it lays nice and flat and doesn't bounce up. All right, and then we needed a black piece that was four and it was four by five and a quarter, and then a white piece that was three and three quarters, three and three quarters by five inches. Don't have my measurements written down. All right, and so it's going to be layered like this onto the card. Okay, like that. And then we have our bright colors. This is our sunset colors. We're gonna do a sunset with this. And then we have some scratch white for our sentiment. And the black is for our image to be in black to make it look like a shadow because the sunset will be behind it. And so this looks black. If you take a picture of a sunset, everything in front of it or closer to you looks black. So that's what we're doing here. And then we have our envelope. I'm gonna set that aside for a moment. Um, two of the things though that I'll be using is the stitched rectangle for my sentiment i'm going to show you i have a smaller sentiment so i'm going to show you how to make this narrower in case you have one that's too big and you need to take it down and make it smaller but maybe it's not the right size in here i can show you how to make it the size you need the stitched rectangles are retiring so you want to get them while you can these are awesome i just was working on cards for um, may card club using the same stamp set as tonight. At the end of this video, I'll show you two of the three cards that we're going to be doing. But we're gonna be using this tonight. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to grab my stamp and cut and emboss machine. So I'll grab that here in a minute. And then we're also going to be using the largest circle 
from our layered circle dies. These are also retiring. If you don't have them, I highly recommend them because you have your scallop circles as well as your solid circles. And you have like every size imaginable, truly. Okay, let me grab that machine real quick. And because I brought dies, so that means I have to have a die cutting machine, right? So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the easy stuff and we're going to glue these together, all right? You could emboss them if you wanted, but you'll see um, that I didn't for a reason. I wanted it flat. Those of you that know me, there's gonna be a lot of white. You're on Facebook Live, I see that. It actually gives me a little F. I don't know what it looks like if someone is watching on YouTube, so if you happen to be watching on YouTube, just go ahead and comment and let me know so that I can see what does the YouTube symbol look like on my, I imagine it'll be, what is it, the white with a little arrow or something? I'm looking for my glue, there it is. So let's go ahead and stick this down. So we're gonna stick this on here. Now, if I go too fast for you, just remember that you can watch the replay and finish it up. Do the best you can, hang in there as good as you can. I don't know if I'm going too fast for you. So I try not to go too fast, but I also don't wanna keep everyone on here too long. So Missy, are you making or are you just watching? I'm waiting for you to start making with me. Come on girl, you can do this. All right, and then we're going to put this onto here. All right, so let's go ahead and flip that over. And so we're just getting our card base. We're not stamping. The only stamping we're actually doing is our sentiment. And that is um, on the scratch paper and then we're cutting it out. So here we go. All right, now you are on Facebook. Your name changed to Elizabeth too. So yeah, it's little red symbol with the white arrow thing. Cool, just watching. All right, one of these days you need to start making with me. So here's this. We're going to be using the stamp set, Paradise Palms, and this is the stamp set that we're using for May Card Club. If you are interested in May Card Club, go ahead and comment May Card Club and I will get that information to you. And, um, I'll show you the two of the three cards that we're making and then tonight we'll be using it. And I tend to use the same stamp set for a while just so you can see other ways of doing it besides what we do in card club. So this is super fun. Um, I've got two really fun cards and then I've got a third one in my head that I got to put on paper tonight. So now we're going to take, let's see, we're going to use our machine in just a moment. So for this, I want to take my image that I'm going to be um, doing in black. And for me, it's going to be a palm tree. Oh, no, not a palm tree. The two palm trees. Here we go. So I need this one and this one. And then I need this one and this one. And then I need the ground as well. All right. So let's see if I got enough black here for all of this. We'll see. Oh, I guess I should turn these over. All right, so like this, and then like that. And then we will have this one right here, and this one right here, whoo, just big enough. I think I double checked it before I got it. So I'm gonna do those all at once, all right. And then for these, we're going to do the circle. All right, we're going to cut a circle out of each one of these. So this is a three inch, yes, this is a three inch circle. So we're gonna cut three, we're gonna cut a three inch circle out of each one. And then I wanna go ahead and stamp this. And I'm going to use the birthday, which I already had out somewhere. I'm going to do the happy birthday on here in black. So let's 
go ahead and ink that. And with this black memento, you want to kind of twist it and ink it back and forth. And then I'm just going to put it right there like that. And then we're going to use our little rectangle, but see it's way bigger than I need. So I'm going to show you how to make it smaller. All right, so let's move this out of the way and this out of the way and this out of the way and bring over our machine. And we'll start with the easy stuff first. So we have our three plates. We have plate, or are they one, two, and three. All right, so you could switch those, you could, you switch so you could see. Oh yes, thank you, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, I figured you did that. So I appreciate that, now I know what it looks like for sure. All right, so I'm gonna start with this one first. All right, so we just wanna make sure they're all on here like that. All right, and so if these move too much for you, you can use post-it notes, you can use post-it tape, whatever you need to to help stick it down. I usually just do that, slide this in here and set it down and then hold it down as I start running it through. Whoop, I guess that's on my paper. Start running it through like that. And then I like to just bring it back to me. Um, sometimes when I'm doing this, I don't. Other times I do. Hold on, I just dropped something. My little um, end of my handle popped out, and if I don't get it, Benji will misplace it for me. She's good at that. <laughs> I couldn't find the tip, the cap to my um, take your pick tool for hours because she had found it on my desk. Obviously, I'd left my room for a moment. She found it on my counter and was playing with it and I couldn't find it and I had to have my boys come in and try and help me find it and then we finally did find it in a place I had looked but I didn't realize that that's what she was playing with. <laughs> Crazy cat. All right, so we have that. We can set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and put these back in here like this, just really easy peasy just so that I don't lose them. And now we will go ahead and get started on all our circles. Super easy to run it through. Just put it in the middle of your paper and run it through. Now you can keep the skeleton of it if you want because you could probably use it on something or you can just go ahead and recycle. And I'm gonna set that right here. Do you ever just keep biting your cheek? Like all day, you just keep biting your cheek in the same spot, no matter what you do. I've been doing that all day long. My one cheek is getting all raw inside because I keep biting it. When, uh, whether I'm chewing, whether I'm drinking, whether I was talking, I just did it now, which is what made me think of it. I did it now while talking to you. I bit my cheek. Not fun, not fun at all. So on this one, I have a larger piece, so I'm gonna push it up here so I still have this piece of scrap. I still have this piece of scrap that I can use for something else. And just keep running in it through. You usually only use the tape post-it when you're cutting out a stamped image. Okay, yeah, that's a good reason too. But if you, like I had them kind of piled close, so sometimes people, if they have things kind of tight in sizing, then you could also do that. I don't use the post-it note very often unless, yeah, it's something that I stamped out that's pretty detailed and I wanna be doubly sure that I don't mess it up. All right, and then the orange. So we have orange, mango melody, rich razzleberry, which is retiring. Both of these two are retiring, the rich razzleberry and the mango melody. Then we have Melon Mambo, it's not retiring. Polished Pink, which is retiring. And then Pumpkin Pie, which is not retiring, but it's getting moved from the Regals to the Brights. 
which I think is a good move because it really doesn't fit the regals. It was kind of bright for the regals, I thought. Um, we have the Cajun craze as our orange for um, the regals. All right, so there's that. And now I'm going to zoom in. Where's my little zoomer? I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And I need to just move this out of the way. I taped it down so that it would stay put. But I guess that's just not even going to work for this time because I need to bring this in so you can see what I'm doing. Because, yeah, you need to see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to put it this way. Normally, you want to run the long ways through. When you run it the short way through, we call it speed bump because it really has to hop over this a little harsher. So, but I'm going to do it this way just so that I can show you what I'm doing. So I'm lining it up to where my top, and this one I'm going to use a post-it. I don't know where my little post-its are, so I'm just going to grab this right there, like that. All right, and I want to push this all the way through so it only shows, it only cuts to here. All right, can you see that? I'm only cutting it, I'm not over far enough. Here we go. See how this is? So I've got this, and then I want to push this through so it only covers, so it doesn't touch this that way this won't cut yet all right and then I'm going to roll it through and then let's see I'll push this back through all right and then you can see here that it's only cut part of it okay it's only cut part of it well, now I want to cut it off here because I wanted something smaller. I'm going to fit these little grooves back into here. All right, you can kind of fit. It'll fit right in. It'll go through. All right. And then I don't even need that anymore. Then I can just run it through all the way. Make sure it stays in the camera. All right, and now what I've got is I've got this, but then when I take this off, this part is not used, and this part is the size that I want it. All right, so just as a recap, when you want to make something smaller than it is, or even bigger than it is, you only cut to half of it at first, then you lay these little edges back into the grooves because they will match up and then you can do the whole thing. If you want to extend something and make it longer or bigger, you can do the same thing by cutting only part of it and then pulling it down so that it will cut more of it. Okay, so that's just a fun little trick that I thought I would share with you. All right, so here we go. Let's do this. So now we need our trimmer. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this light on. And then I'm going to zoom back out. And I want to apologize ahead of time. There might be some commotion. My husband is home earlier than I thought he would be. And he has the dog with him. And I don't know if the back door is unlocked. So they might have to come, the downfall of the having a craft room at the front door is that people just come marching through. All right, so we have our envelope, our envelopes, our circles, all right? And what we're going to do is being, we're going to cut them into five, five strips, okay? And try and cut in the same spot. I don't have perfect measurements. I sat here for the longest time trying to figure out and I don't normally show you the card until I'm done but I'm going to show you what we're doing. So we're cutting it into all these different layers. 
Now the thing is with this is it's going to turn that circle into more of an oval, which is fine, but you want approximately the same distance between each strip. And I don't have a measurement. I tried to figure out the perfect measurement for this three inch circle. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Sometimes the top would be a little bit smaller than the other, but as long as you cut it in approximately the same spot. So I do it at about half an inch, approximately. Maybe a smidget over or a smidget under. Oh, the back door was open. <laughs> All right, so we have that one and then, so it's like just a little bit over the half inch mark. It looks like, maybe I'm, yeah. So we're cutting it into five pieces. Each circle will be about five pieces, will be five pieces. So you're gonna cut all of them the same. All right, so there's one circle. And you can see here, I'll lay it out. That's what I did with my other. And I have lots of pieces from the others. Might just make some fun Easter eggs with it or something. So like that. So there's five. So you can see they're not perfectly, they're not the perfect size, but as long as you get it close. I wish I could cut all five of them at the same time, but that's just not even possible. So just a little bit. There we go. I guess I could have just done all but the one, but since we're, you're making it along with me, I don't like to work ahead of you. If I was just demonstrating, then I don't mind doing that. Hi, Michelle. All right, you like that trick? Yeah, I don't know if I've ever taught it in person. I feel like I have, but you just never know. I, I do so many lives and so many different classes. I don't, I don't really, I can't keep track of what I have shared or not shared. Missy's good at helping me know whether I <laughs> taught something. Like the, Missy said that I had never taught when you use your stamp on the black to not just tap, but also twist. So now I try and remember to say that whenever I use it to help make sure that it sinks in and everything. So, yeah. Oh, Missy, he didn't, he didn't end up coming through the house, so that worked out in my favor because um, Millie would have been chaos coming in. <laughs> and the cats might have been. The cats, I think, are both in here with me. There's Benji. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if Lucky's in here or not. When it's just the cats and I, I don't tend to close that door. It's just when it's the dog. <laughs> so you can see that my circles are not perfectly, and if anyone figures out the perfect measurement for this, let me know. Because I tried to figure it out and that just didn't work for me. So to me, they're close enough, they don't have to be perfect. All right, because you'll be able to do a little bit of mixing and matching, but I just, yeah. I came up with the just a smidge over, not a whole eighth, but just a smidge over the half inch seemed to be it. And I don't know if it's because of a three inch circle, if maybe I should have used a smaller circle. I don't have a larger one. The three inch was the largest circle. So that's why I went with that one. So looks like some of mine are the same and some of them are a little different, but close enough. Last circle. And I keep biting my cheek. Ouch. I don't know why I keep doing that. I've been doing it all day long. I thought maybe I was dehydrated. Is that why we bite our cheeks? Maybe we're dehydrated. Maybe I should drink a quick drink of water. I don't know, but I dislike it when you 
keep biting that same spot on the inside of your cheek. That's just no fun. All right, so we're done with this and now we can put our card together. All right, so here is, and of course, if you have some sort of a flower, it doesn't really matter what image you have, you can still do this. It still just gives it that shadow technique. And so whatever it is that you have, it just looks like you have the setting sun behind it and it's all good. So now what I wanna do is I wanna have this one on top. All right, don't glue anything down yet. And then the Melon Mambo would be next. And then the pink, the polished pink. And then the um, pumpkin pie. And then this one. All right, so it kind of turns it into, like I said, it kind of turns it into an oval, but that's okay. And then you're going to have it just a little bit separated. Oh, this worked out beautifully. Even though my bottom is a little bit um, bigger than the top one, it works out okay because that's the sun and that's where I'm going to be putting my grass behind. So that works out good. Now I can see I'm a little angled off. So I'm going to wanna turn it a little bit. So what we're going to do though, is we're going to put dimensionals under these. So let's get our dimensionals. And then these, you can find a different use for. I haven't quite figured out, like I said, I might just do some Easter eggs. I have my sentiment piece. So now I want to flip these over like this. And I wanna put my dimensionals on it. I'm going to put two on each of the smaller ones and then I'll put three on each of the longer ones. Ooh. Sticking. All right. All right. Michelle, you didn't know that. You didn't know that trick? Well, good. Then I taught you something new today. Woo! <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you'll learn something new in club tomorrow. Because <laughs> tomorrow we have our local club. All right. So now we're going to start again. Now, what you want to make sure to do is that you may want to go ahead and put dimensionals on the back of your sentiment. And you might want to go ahead and put that on there so that you make sure to leave room for it. So I'm going to go ahead and put mine down here. And that way I know I need this a little bit higher so that I have enough room. All right, because I'm going to have my grass. I have a little thing to poke out there. I have my grass that's going to go here across the bottom so that it looks like the setting sun right there. All right, so I wanna make sure to have plenty of space for that. And then we'll put my, the orange, so the mango melody, and then the pumpkin pie. And I, what I did for sunsets, you can do this for sunsets and for um, sunrises. I just Googled sunset and then clicked on images so I could see the different images so I could see the different colors that were involved. Um, and I seem to be on a sunset kick because one of the cards you'll see for Card Club next month is another sunset but with blending, blending brushes. Yeah. All right, so you don't want too much of a gap. You just want a little bit of a gap between each color. And try and line up the sides. Mine are a little bit off. So try and line up your sides so that they kind of go together. There we go. That's a little bit high, okay? 
So, but I'm not gonna peel it all off. I'm gonna leave it as is, but normally you wouldn't want it quite so high. All right, and then we're going to put this down here. I'm going to put little mini dimensionals on the very outer edge as far out as I can get it, just on each side. Make sure they don't show. I should be using my black ones on these. I didn't even think of that. I don't have them out normally. So then I want to have, I don't want the sunshine to show below, so I'm going to go right up to it like that. And then I have my palm trees. I'm going to flip these over to the back side and these over to the front side. And then I need to put a little bit of glue on these dots. Oops, that's a lot of glue. That's a lot of glue. All right, so then I'm going to put this one on here. Hopefully it's not squishing out. It is squishing out a little bit. So I'm gonna leave it like that for a little bit. And then I'm going to put this one on here. I don't know why I flipped the palm, the palm fronds over. They didn't need to be flipped over because I was putting them on here. Oops, I got a cat and a toy underneath my feet. Benji is chasing a pom-pom. All right. And I'm sure she says, hi, Missy. <laughs> what color is the middle pink? Okay, so it's Mango Melody, Pumpkin Pie, Polished Pink, Melon Mambo, and Rich Razzleberry. Those are the colors that I used. And I can put those down below, what colors I used. Is that something you would want in the email to know what colors I use in case you wanted to case it completely and copy it completely? I can do that. All right. Usually use the tape post-it. Okay, when you're cutting, just making sure I'm not switched. Okay, all right. I can see everything. How fun. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to stick this in here, but it's longer than I need, but that's okay, because I can cut it down. So I'm going to put that like that, and then I'll cut this off. And then I'm going to be doing this one at even more of an angle, sliding it underneath like this. All right. So I know that I need to put glue on these like this, and I'm going to run some glue down along this, and it's gonna catch wherever it can on there. And I saw this on Pinterest, but I don't have a name. She did it with blues. It looked really pretty. Um, I decided to do it with a sunset, but I don't, I didn't catch the name and it wasn't on her picture that I saved. I always figure if I'm saving something, it'll have the picture on it. It'll have their name on the picture, but apparently not everybody puts their name on the picture. So it doesn't have a name on it, so I can't tell you who, but I saw it on Pinterest in blues, different hues of blue. And I thought it was really pretty, but my first thought was the, um, and she did something a little different than I did, but the idea of the circle and the change in that is what I was going for. All right, so why is this? Oh, here we go. It was running into that. All right, there we go. Stick those down and then we'll use our scissors to just trim off those bottoms because we don't want those bottoms. So I'm gonna just lift that up a little bit. So my husband's grilling tri-tip. He went to the meat marketplace in Sea Falls, Columbia Falls just to get tri-tip because ever since a railroad or friend told him about it, he's been talking about it and thinking about it nonstop. So he's like, I think that's what I'm gonna make for dinner tonight. I said, okay. I love having a house husband when he's home, lets me work, <laughs> which 
of course, you know, work and play are synonymous when you're crafting as your job. All right, so this one came out a little bit high, so I could have made this larger. Let me show you the other one. See the difference? I like how there was more white up here. I got this a little bit too high, but I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to pull it apart because the person who gets this, unless they're watching this live, is not going to know that it wasn't supposed to be that high. And if I don't like all the white down here, then I could put something else. I could put another set of grass here if I wanted, something to kind of bring it down a little bit more. But you can see that this one is nicely centered and this one is just a little bit high on top. All right, so this one I did as retirement, this one I'm doing as birthday. And then on the inside, what we'll do and get your envelope as well. So on the inside, we will take, I'm going to take these three palm trees and my black ink. And I'm going to ink them up really well. And put them down here like that in that corner and then do the same thing with this one in this corner and then I'm going to take my sentiment that says wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day even though it's sunset I'm still going to use that and I'm just going to put that down here so I've got the happy birthday on the outside and then on the inside wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day. So that my friends is our mystery make along for tonight. I trust yours came out more like this. Michelle, were you making with me? I think you were, I think you had cut up your ingredients. Super fun if you have. If I went too fast, then of course you have the replays both on Facebook or on YouTube, so you can always catch that and just be able to pause me when I'm talking too fast. I get excited, so I, I can only slow down so much. <laughs> I love this. But I do like how these palm trees, you know how if you've been around palm trees, they do kind of come out from each other, and I didn't get that... I didn't get that connection made over here. So, but the person who gets this is not even going to know how it was supposed to be. All right, definitely like the lower one better. Yeah, this one came out much better. So, but this one looks a little more like a circle. This one looks more like an oval. I don't know. It's fun to play with. You can try different things. I've thought about trying it with some different colors. Um, to see if I could do like a sunrise so that it would end in blue. So maybe start in yellow and end in blue. I haven't decided. Right now I seem to be more into sunsets than sunrises. Although I get to see the sunrise every morning. So I should just start paying attention to the colors there. I don't get to this, see the sunset because of the trees and the houses behind us. So, and I miss the Arizona sunsets. That's one of the things I do miss from Arizona. All right, so let me show you two of the cards we'll be making. So this one is with that foil paper. What's it called? It's called Dry Brush Metallic Paper. It comes in the gold with the um, petal pink color on it. And then it comes in, what do they call this one? This is considered soft succulent so I use a soft succulent card base and so it's got soft succulent but it's also got a blue hue in there let's see if you can see it better this way there we go all right so I kind of did that as like a daytime sort of sky it says find a little paradise wherever you may be and then I had a strip in here so this is one of the cards we'll be making for card club and then the other one is this card so using blending brushes we're going to do a sunset all right and then we have the little palm fronds that are hanging down and then on this one it says retirement wishes hope you find a little paradise wherever you may be 
All right, and so we use blending brushes on this one. We'll, we will use blending brushes on this one to do the sunset. Super fun, right? And then this is uh, the Rich Razzleberry, which just is such a gorgeous, gorgeous color. So these are the two cards. Oh, and on the front, I just used some of the cards. Oh, you can see where that label was, or the flap was. But I just used some of the blending brushes to create that little bit of a sunset with the black palm trees in it. So the third card is going to be a daytime sunny, sunshiny card um, using the wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day will be on the front and then happy birthday or retirement wishes could go on the inside, whichever. So those are the cards that I'll be doing. You have until the 10th to subscribe for that. So I will be putting a Facebook post in there. If you want more information on Card Club and you're watching the replay here on YouTube, then please send me an email, joombugcreations29 at gmail.com, and just let me know that you want card, card Club information, and I will do that. That is a subscription, a monthly subscription. You get all the ingredients, plus a half pack of paper, plus some ribbon and embellishments, and we make the cards together live or and you get a PDF tutorial and a video tutorial for $35 plus shipping if you are not local, which is $8. So if you, if, <coughs> excuse me, if Card Club sounds great to you, then please let me know. We'll be using the Paradise Palm set, which is retiring, okay? And it is sold separately. This does not come in the kit. You would order this separately from my online store. All right. So you would order the bun, the, ooh, I don't think it's bundled actually anymore because it's been in there for a while. So you would order the stamp set and dies, and then we would make the cards together, or you can use the PDF and the video tutorial. So if you want more information on that, go ahead and email me junebugcreations29 at gmail.com. So I trust you give these a whirl and let me know how it goes. I always like to know how it goes and what you, what kind of colors you did. Send me a picture of it. So you love Card Club Missy? Yes, I do too. I do too. And I know Michelle does too. And we have that tomorrow <coughs> morning at 11 o'clock locally and 6 p.m. locally. And then last Saturday on um, the first Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And that is a Zoom. So I do it Zoom and I do it locally. So I look forward to seeing you all in Card Club or on the next live. I will be sending out the email tomorrow. I'm going to work on sending it tomorrow. Otherwise, it will be Saturday as it has been um, for the next mystery make along on Monday night. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, forgot to go back to my face. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.